Genre. Fairy tale. Essential question. What can you do to get the information you need? Read about how a girl on a quest gets the information she needs. Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lin. In this tale set in long ago China, the young Min Li seeks the old man of the moon. This mysterious person has the power to read from the Book of Fortune, which tells each person's destiny. Because he can answer any question, Min Li hopes that he will be able to tell her how to change the fortunes of her poor family. As she sets out to find him, Min Li meets a series of characters who provide clues to guide her. One character, a dragon who long ago escaped from the terrible ruler Magistrate Tiger, decides to join Min Li. Together they travel to the city of bright moonlight, where they try to figure out a puzzling clue. Min Li must find the guardian of the city and ask for a borrowed line to bring to the old man of the moon. Though Min Li guesses that the guardian must be the king of the city, what could the borrowed line be? She must find out. While the dragon hides outside the city gates, Min Li sneaks into the king's palace in the inner city. When she finds the king, she asks him for the borrowed line. Hearing this odd request reminds the king of a certain page that was said to have been borrowed from the Book of Fortune. The king reveals that his ancestor, Magistrate Tiger, had overtaken the city long ago, and that it was the magistrate who had angrily ripped this page from the book. He tore a page out of the Book of Fortune, Min Li said. Yes, the king said, but he himself was never able to read it, so it remained useless to him just as the old man of the moon had said it would be. Come, the king said, as he walked out of the pavilion onto the bridge under the moon. As Min Li followed, he reached inside the breast of his shirt, slowly took out a gold-threaded pouch and said, This is the ripped page. It has been passed down from generation to generation, studied by the kings of the city of bright moonlight. None of us has ever understood what the old man of the moon meant when he said it was borrowed. Min Li watched, fascinated, as the king took from the gold pouch a delicate folded piece of paper. Paler than even the white jade tofu she had eaten for dinner, the paper seemed to have a light of its own, dimming the gold threads of the pouch that held it. It was my great-great-grandfather, the king said, unfolding the paper, who realized that the words on it can only be seen in the bright moonlight. He renamed the city, the City of Bright Moonlight, as a reminder for the kings that followed him. Min Li looked at the paper as if in a daze. In the moonlight, the page glowed. A single line of faint words as if written with shadows, was scrawled upon the page in a language Min Li had never seen. So I think this paper, which the old man of the moon said he borrowed, the king said, this written line torn from the Book of Fortune is the borrowed line you seek. Of course, Min Li said. An excitement bubbled inside of her. It must be but her excitement popped as she looked at the carefully preserved page and remembered how the king had had it on his person carefully and preciously kept in the pouch around his neck. It seemed impossible that he would give her such a cherished treasure. It was only after much study that my great-great-grandfather was able to decipher the words, the king said. This is when he realized that the words changed according to the situation at the time. From then on, whenever a king of the City of Bright Moonlight has a problem, he consults the paper. And it tells you what to do? Min Li asked. Yes, the king gave a wry smile, though not the way you think. 
sometimes the line on the page is more mysterious than the problem. And with that, the king looked down at the line. As he read, a startled expression came across his face. What does it say? Minley asked. It says, the king said slowly, you only lose what you cling to. The king's words seemed to hang in the air. All was silent except for the soft rustling of the page and the gentle breeze. Min Li, unable to speak, watched it flutter as if it were waving at her. So it seems your request, the king said, deserves consideration. The line tells me as much. Let me think. Minley looked at the king, quiet but puzzled. For generations, my family has prized this paper. We have honored it for its spiritual power and authority. It has been passed on and studied and cherished and revered. It has been valued above gold or jade, the king said slowly. But what is it really? Min Li shook her head, unsure if she should respond. It is actually, the king said, simply proof of my ancestor's rudeness, his unprincipled anger and ruthless greed. Yet we've disregarded that. Instead, we guard and protect this written line so dearly that the rulers of the city of bright moonlight carry it at all times, not daring to let it out of their possession. The moon seemed to tremble as ripples spread over its reflection caught in the water. The king continued, again speaking more to himself than to Min Li. We have clung to it, always afraid of losing it, the king said. But if I choose to release it, there is no loss. Min Li felt her breath freeze in her chest. She knew the king's mind was in a delicate balance. If he refused to give her the line now, she knew she would never get it. And perhaps it was never meant for us to cling to. No matter whom the paper originally belonged to, this is a page from the Book of Fortune, a book that no one owns, the king said. So perhaps it is time for the paper to return to the book. A wind skimmed the water, and Min Li could see her anxious face, as pale and as white as the moon reflected in it. You only lose what you cling to, the king repeated to himself. He glanced again at the paper, and then looked at Min Li. A serene expression settled on his face, and then he quietly smiled and said, So by choosing to give you the line, I do not lose it. And with those words, he placed the paper in Min Li's trembling hands. Outside the city, Dragon waited. Even after Min Li had disappeared, the dragon still watched from the trees. He had felt odd when she had passed the old stone lions the door had closed behind her. He realized that he had never had a friend before and what a nice feeling it was to have one. And perhaps that was why, the second night when the sky darkened, the moon rose, Dragon crept out from the shadows of the trees and approached the closed, sleeping city. While he wouldn't admit it, Dragon thought just standing by the walled city might make him feel just a bit less lonely. The silver moon cast a frosted glow upon the rough stone wall and guardian lion statues. Dragon stared at them as he approached the gate. Their stocky, heavily built bodies seemed to weigh down the stone platforms they sat upon, and the darkness of the night made their stiff, curly manes look like rows of carved blossoms. One lion held a round ball underneath his forearm. The other held down a lion cub that seemed to be grinning at him. In fact, all the lions seemed to be grinning at him, as if he were a secret joke they were watching. Am I so funny? Dragon asked them as he passed. Yes, burst out the small lion cub, 
wriggling free of his mother's paw. You're very funny. As Dragon jumped back in surprise, the lion cub laughed out loud, obviously highly amused at the dragon shock. But with his laugh, both adult lions shook themselves from their platforms. Xiao Mao, the mother lion scolded, don't laugh at the lost dragon. Besides, you know the rules. No moving in the presence of others. But it's a dragon, the cub said, not a people. He doesn't count for the rules, does he? Besides, he is funny. Big dragon trying to tiptoe like a mouse. Xiao Mao, the deep male voice of the other lion, boomed in the air. The cub gave a half-hearted look of shame and was immediately quiet and still. By this time, Dragon had found his voice. You're alive, then, he said. Of course we are, the male lion said, scrutinizing the dragon with interested eyes. Everything's alive. The ground you're walking on, the bark of those trees. We were always alive, even before we were lions and were just raw stone. However, carving us did give us a bit more personality. You're a fairly young dragon, aren't you? The female lion said kindly. You seem only a hundred or a hundred and fifty years old. Don't worry. You'll learn soon enough. A hundred, the lion cub said. I'm much older than you. I'm eight hundred and sixty-eight. And you still have not attained wisdom, the father lion told him. Don't tease the young one. Well, what are you doing here? the cub asked, not unkindly. Dragons don't usually come down to the earth much. Are you lost? Though unusual, the lions weren't unfriendly. So Dragon settled down and told them the whole story. Being born, living in the forest, meeting Min Lee, and now their travels to find the borrowed line and the old man of the moon. The lions didn't interrupt once, though the cub did snicker from time to time. You belong to Magistrate Tiger, the cub said when Dragon had finished. That means you're the terrible dragon. You're the one that destroyed the Magistrate's palace. What a lot of trouble you caused. Dragon looked at the older lions questioningly. About one hundred years ago, the female lion said, the Magistrate fled his home village. A dragon had destroyed his palace, and his people had cast him out saying he was bad luck. He came here, intending to make his home with his son and to live off his son's wealth and power as the king of the city of bright moonlight. There were bad times here for the city, as the magistrate and the officials he brought with him were corrupt and greedy. We were very concerned. You? the dragon asked. Why would it concern you? Why would it concern us? It is completely our concern, the male lion said. We are the guardians of the city. It's our responsibility to watch and keep the city turning. To see it begin to crack alarmed us to no end. The lion held out the round ball he held in his hand, and showed Dragon an old, deep fracture that was slowly being filled with the dust of the earth. What did you do? Dragon asked. A string of destiny. We were afraid the city would break. As the times became more turbulent with secret meetings and violent outbursts, we watched the crack in our world widen. It was only a matter of time, we thought, before it would tear into two. One night as we despaired, we saw a figure walking in the moonlight. Bent and old, he glowed like a lit lantern. When we saw he was carrying a large book and a small sack, we knew instantly it was the old man of the moon and called him over. Please help us, we begged him. We need to keep the city together. The old man of the moon looked at us, our outstretched cracking globe and our pleading faces. Without a word, he sat down before us and opened his book, leafing through the pages and stroking his beard. After several minutes of consulting his book, he opened his sack and handed us a red thread. You are to hold this until it is needed, the old man told us. 
and then slapped his book shut and walked away, ignoring our words of thanks. We knew the old man of the moon had given us a string of destiny, one of the very strings he used to bind people together. It was a marvelous gift. While he left us no instructions, we guessed that we were to use it to tie around the city if it looked as if it were to split. After that, night after night, we watched our sphere, ready to use the string at the first signs of breakage. Unsure of its power or abilities, we dared not use it for anything but the direst of circumstances. But the crack did not grow. Unexpectedly, the king renounced his father. He exiled him and his officials from the city, and harmony returned. Slowly the fracture has filled with the powder of earth and stone. And I have held the string unused. And as the male lion finished, he lifted his paw to reveal a flattened line of red thread. The borrowed line, Dragon said. That's it. Min Li said she needed to get the borrowed line from the guardian of the city. You're the guardian, and that's the borrowed line we need. I suppose it is, the lion said, looking at the string. So perhaps I have been holding it all this time, so I could give it to you. And the lion dropped the string into the dragon's outstretched hand. The next morning, Min Li woke up alone under a heavy, rich blanket. Even though she was on the floor of the garden pagoda, she had slept comfortably. As she sat up, she realized that was probably due to the silk pillow she had been lying on. The soft sunlight cast leaf shadows across her face. And the wind made gentle ripples in the moss-colored lake in front of her. The imperial garden was just as beautiful in the day as it was by night. On one side of her lay a small table with a small pot of tea, a bowl of rice porridge, and tea-stained eggs. Breakfast! Minley thought to herself, but before she reached for it, she saw that a yellow brocade traveling bag lay on the other side of her. Inside the bag, Min Lee found her humble blanket, rabbit rice bowl with needle and bamboo piece, chopsticks, a generous supply of cakes, and her hollow gourd full of fresh water. On the very top lay the gold-threaded pouch that held the ripped page of fortune. Minley took the pouch and held it with two hands. Well, I have the borrowed line, Minley thought. At least I hope it is. So after a quick breakfast, Minley quietly left the pavilion. Part of her was tempted to explore the mosaic walkways through the jewel-colored leaves, but she knew being discovered by one of the king's counselors would be disastrous. Also, she knew Dragon was patiently waiting outside the city. So using the king's secret door, Min Li carefully left the garden and walls of the inner city. And when she was out of the garden, Min Li realized it was very early morning. The outer city was still sleeping. The stands were bare and the umbrellas were closed. Quickly, Min Li scurried to the gate. With great effort, she was able to get through. She had to use a metal pole she'd found on the ground to lift the lock and lever one of the doors open. Even then, she was only able to get it open a crack and had to squeeze. As she fell through the gate, gasping for air, she was shocked to see Dragon lying in front of the stone lion, sleeping. It took a couple of prods before Dragon woke, and his loud morning yawns almost put Min Li in a panic but they were able to get back to the hiding shelter of the forest before anyone saw them. What were you doing by the city? Min Li asked. You were supposed to stay hidden. I was getting the borrowed line, Dragon said. What do you mean? Min Li said. I have the borrowed line. And in a rush, the two of them told each other about their night adventures. Dragon stared at the ripped page from the book, and Min Li looked at the red cord in Dragon's hand. So which is the real borrowed line? Dragon asked Min Li. I guess that is another question we'll have to ask the old man of the moon.
Minley said. 